In this lesson, we'll learn about path animation in Max. This scene is path animation start in your project files. Okay, now it's time to add some movement to our soccer ball. All right, our objective is to have the soccer ball go from point A, the green helper, to point B, the red helper. And while this happens, the, the soccer ball needs to curve around this bend and, and bounce along the way. So we have a, a, a good challenge ahead of us. Now, what's the best way to have this happen? Would it be to hand animate the bouncing ball? That might take too much time. Instead, let's go ahead and use these tools in Max creatively. How about just use path animation to make sure that the ball has a nice curve or a nice arc as it goes around this bend to the end point. And then from there, we'll go ahead and take a look at some other very helpful tools that will allow us to get this animation done in no time at all. All right, so with that said, again, we're going to focus on path animation in this course. And path animation allows us to animate an object along a trajectory. So this would be great for even flying aircrafts. But in our case, we're going to use it again to have this ball travel around this bend to our end position. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll head over to the top view, just pressing Alt-A to get to the four panel view. And then we'll go ahead and right click in the top view pane and press Alt-W again. Okay, great. So here is where we're going to draw out our path. Let's go ahead and head over to the Create panel shapes and we'll use the line tool. Okay. So starting from point A, we'll go ahead and click and hold the left mouse button. And as we drag this, we are determining the length of the tangent handle connected to that point. All right, so as we let go, notice how the curve has more of a bend. If we were to just click once, it would be a linear curve. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click again. Set the next point, click again, and I'm holding the left mouse button. Now click once more to end, uh, to end the curve. I right click to exit the tool. I want to make sure we right click a few times to do that. All right, so from here, we can go to the modify panel, and under the line sub object, we can get to the lines vertices. So I'll go ahead and choose vertex. And I'll start to reposition these points. Go ahead and make sure that the selection tool is set to square. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead and start to move this endpoint so that it's centered with our endpoint helper. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. We just want it to make sure we just want to make sure that our ball ends up at that spot. Okay, so now what we'd want to do is go ahead and add some more curvature to this or basically improve the arc of this path so that we have something that looks accurate. Right now it's kind of linear in a few areas and if we were to go ahead and connect our, our soccer ball to this path, the animation would look wrong. So let's go ahead and fix the curvature. We can use the rotate tool. So our points are selected, just pressing the E key. And I'll use the move tool to move that in a little bit more. We could also scale these these tangent handles. So I'll go to the scale tool and, and scale in the Y. Notice we're getting better curvature there. Let's go ahead and tweak the second point. I'll scale it out a little bit more. Rotate it. And then maybe bring it out a little bit more in the Y X plane with the move tool. Okay. That's looking good. All right, so from there, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and tweak the first point. Fixing the curvature there. What's great about path animation in Max is that even after we have constrained our object to the path, we can go back and tweak the path if we need to. All right, so from here, with the path still selected, I'm going to go ahead and rename it. I'm going to just call this ball underscore path zero one. 
We always want to stay organized and rename our objects so we can find them very easily within our scene. Alright, so from there I'll go ahead and press Alt-W, right click in the perspective, Alt-W, so we can head back to this panel. Okay, so from here what we'd want to do is take our path and let's go ahead and move up its position so it's centered with our start and end positions. Okay, great. So now we're ready to connect our ball to the motion path. I'll go ahead and select the soccer ball, head over to Animation, Constraints, Path Animation, or Path Constraint. All right, from there we can go ahead and choose our path. And now, notice this, we have a few keys set on our trackbar. Okay, here is the start point, frame zero, and notice what happens when we hit play. The ball is now moving at a constant speed to the end point. Great. Okay, so we have the, the position of the ball taken care of, but what about the orientation? Right now, just the position is locked down. As we can see, there's no rotation. This ball is not oriented to the path. So to do that, we simply head over to our motion panel, which we should be in already, because once we attach the path constraint, once we make that connection, Max is going to bring us to this panel. From there, we'd want to check out our position list, because that's what's being locked down with the path constraint, all right, this object's position. But what's great is that we can go ahead and have this object conform to the path by choosing follow. Okay, so you can see how the orientation of the ball changes. And now, you can see how the rotation is following the contour of the path. What's also great about this is that we have full control to still animate the rotation of this object, which is great. We can add an extra level of rotation. And we'll get to that later. But now, this, now that this has been taken care of, the next step is going to be to go ahead and take a look at our interpolation. Right now we want this constant speed, this linear speed, but let me go ahead and show you something. The ball selected will right click and head over to the track view curve editor. Okay, from there I'll just go ahead and make this window a little bit larger so we can see what's happening. Alright, so once we attach our path constraint, again it constrains the position of the object, so that's where we're going to find it in the curve editor on the parameter side. All right, right under the position list. And here's our percentage. This is our animation curve or function curve. Now, right now everything's moving at a constant speed as we could see by looking at this F curve. But if we wanted to change this, we'd have to go ahead and right click on the percentage, head over to assign controller and choose Bezier float. I'll go ahead and choose okay. And now notice we have a Bezier path of action, or the speed is going to now vary. All right, we're going to have this slow start, then the ball will accelerate, and then it will slow when it comes to its end point. We can go ahead and hit play and, and, and see this happen. But for our case, I think the linear path is going to work out great, so I just wanted to show you that. So to switch this back to the default setting, we simply right click, head over to Assign Controller, Linear Float, choose OK. Notice when it's set to Linear Float also, you can't access the tangent handles of these keys. You can't set this to Auto or Custom. It only happens when we set this back to Bezier Float. Okay, but with that said, the last task here is going to be just to kind of clean things up a little bit more in our scene. So what that means is taking the helpers and then taking our path and adding it to a layer. Okay, this is so that we can go ahead and show or hide these objects very quickly. So with these selected, I'll head over to Tools and choose Manage Layers. From there, we can go ahead and create a new layer. I'll call this Objects to Hide. Now this check mark means that this is the active layer, so as we start adding objects, they're going to be by default connected to this active layer. I like to have the default layer the active layer, 
Because what happens is, if we go to objects to hide and hide that, as we start adding objects, we won't be able to see them. So we may think that there's a glitch when in actuality we just need to change our layer setting. So be mindful of that. All right, but with that said, we have experimented with path animation to get our soccer ball on the path it needs to be on. So what we need to do now is have some bouncing and we'll go, we'll go ahead and uh, learn how to do that in the next lesson because it's going to take a little bit more than just selecting our soccer ball and moving it. Okay, with the move tool, you can see how that soccer ball is locked to the path. So we need to come up with another way to have this soccer ball bounce as it goes around this bend.